In our previous video, we explored how we can put text views and edit text on a layout in Android. We also looked at how we can look at the activity that supports that layout, and we can capture the information that the user has entered into in edit text. We can hit search, and what we'll see is that the text that we've entered here will appear on a pop-up down here. And I see that came a little off screen, and also you didn't get to see me type that data in. So let me change this. Let me correct the spelling of Fuji, for instance. We'll put in a lowercase u. If we're lucky, we'll be able to click right there. There we go. Okay, Fuji, oh, Fuji, there we go. Okay, now we're gonna try it again. Well, okay, Fuji, <laughs> try it one more time. F-U-G, there we go. Uh, now I'm gonna hit search, and in a moment you'll see a pop-up render with I like Fuji apples. Okay, in this recording, we're going to explore a few things. We're going to explore how we can look at the debugger to see what's happening under the covers in this operation. We're also going to look at an efficient way that we can share and collaborate on our projects using GitHub. So first of all, the debugger, what we want to do this is a very powerful development and learning tool, the debugger. To start the debugger, what we want to do in our project is right click, and then we want to say debug as Android application. Not run as, but debug as Android application. Now it can take the debugger a while to load, because the debugger does have to load up an Android AVD. So I've already done that part. The next thing that we want to do is we want to take a look at a method that's going to be called. Now I'll maximize this so we can see we can see this entire method on our screen. I click in the class and I type control M and control M will take this window and maximize it so it consumes most of the real estate of our screen. Okay, it just takes just a second here. Now if you recall we if we make a method that looks like this we can wire it up directly to a button so by like this what i mean is it has to be public is an access modifier it has to return void and then we can give it any name we want that's legal and it has to accept a parameter of type view and that's the only parameter so we have this search clicked wired up to our search button I'm going to right click. I'm going to choose other properties. Recent. I uh, don't see it there. I'm going to choose all by name. And this one, we have to scroll a little bit to find it. But trust me, it's already there. It's called on click. So I'm just going to have to scroll down here. Click. Uh, bear with me a moment as I click down here. Lots of properties to find here. Almost there. And eventually we get to this one called on click. You see, I've set that to be search clicked. And search clicked is the name of the method right here. Okay, uh, you can always look at the XML under the covers and see the same. You can see that the button has an on click event set to search clicked. So the YCWIG editor, it's just creating this XML under the covers. You always have that option to look at that XML under the covers and see what was created. Sometimes that's faster than the menu system. In any case, we know when we click that button. What it's going to do is it is going to trigger this method public void search clicked right here. And what I did is I right clicked and chose toggle breakpoint. And that gives me a little blue button right here. Now, this is debugging. And even though this is an introductory class, debugging is always important. And debugging will save you a lot of time. What debugging will allow you to do is step through some logic one at a time. Now a warning, it takes about three times of using the debugger and getting frustrated with it before you really get it down pat. You have to go through, it's like learning to drive a stick shift or learning how to wear contacts. It's something where the first few times you try it, you give up, you'll, you'll swear you'll never use it again, but it really pays off in the long run. So let's make this our first time. What I'm gonna do is I'm going to click search. As soon as I click search, we're going to get a message that comes up in Eclipse, in, 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 in Eclipse. And notice that nothing's happened on our screen. It still has the search button pressed. Still has the search button pressed. So I'm gonna go ahead and click yes here. And now what Eclipse is letting us do is it's allowing us to step through this method one at a time, one line at a time. 
Okay, so watch this. You see the green line? That line eclipses waiting for us to run it. Okay, as soon as I choose F6, it's going to run that line. If you can't remember F6, don't worry. You can also hit this little uh, step over button up here. Both will do the same thing. So I choose F6 and what you'll notice, or I can go ahead and hit the button, what you'll notice is that the green bar now goes down to the next line. That means it's executed this line. Now, here's the good part. I hold Control and I press M. And let's take a look. Over in the variables window, take a look. STR description, do you see that? And do you see the value? I like Fuji apples. And do you remember that's what we typed in over on our Android screen? I like Fuji apples. One of the nicest thing about the debugger is it lets us see live the value of variables. I can also mouse over this variable str description and again take a look. I like Fuji apples. It's one of the nicest thing about the debugger. What else is interesting with the debugger we can actually change these values while it's running if we want. So if I didn't mean to say I like Fuji apples I can change this to, I like Rayburn apples. Okay, and there we go. It changes while the program is running. So the debugger is incredible. It gives us an opportunity to watch the program run line by line. Very, very good idea. Now on line 33, we have a decision to make. Remember, this is a method call here, sum 1, 2. Remember how that's a method call. What if we want to look at that method? If we want to look at that method, we want to choose F5. Oops, sorry. We want to choose F5 or step into, which is also this button right here, if we want to step into that method. On the other hand, if we want that method to execute without any intervention from us, we can choose step over and just allow the method to ex execute by itself. Let's go ahead and step into the method. Again, the green line in Eclipse is the line that's about to run. And the decision I have here is either to tell that method to run with a step over or jump into that method and see what's inside. We're gonna choose to see what's inside. I'm gonna choose step into. Watch what happens to the green line. And remember, this is a one and a two. Okay, we step into. Now take a look, look where that green line went. It went into the sum method. And what is operand 1 and operand 2? Well, if you look here in the variables tab, you can see the values of operand 1 is the number 1. The value of operand 2 is the number 2. And we're about to sum those two together to come up with a total. Okay. Let's go ahead and do that. As soon as I choose step over, we're going to see another variable appear in the variables tab. And that variable is going to be total. So step over. Total, three. And what is this method going to return? It's going to return total. Let's step over again and watch what happens. Watch where the green line goes. We're finished with that sum method, so the green line goes right back to where that sum method was called. Okay. Step over again. And now it's about to make that toast, so I'm going to bring back the emulator. And I'm finished walking through the debugger. So I'm going to go ahead and press play and then quickly jump back over to the emulator and take a look. I like Brayburn apples. Did you see that? Remember, the debugger allows us to jump into a variable and actually change its value. It also allows us to uh, step one line at a time through a program. Debugger is a very useful tool from novices all the way up to experts. Everybody should use it. A lot of times we think that we spend uh, our lives writing applications from scratch, but I can tell you in reality, we spend a lot of time fixing applications and figuring out what's wrong with applications. That's really what we end up doing in most of our uh, career as software developers. Now, uh, a little analogy, I work with a guy who was a copy, copy machine repairman for many years. Now think of what that means going in, fixing copiers and faxes that are broken. He didn't make the copier or fax, he just fixed it. He just has to go and fix it. He became a software developer after that, and a very good software developer. 
uh, and he works with me now. He was also a student of mine 13 years ago. And uh, we came in uh, in our, you know, we worked together. And so in the break room, they had a refrigerator and the ice machine was broken. And so somebody put up a sticky note that said the ice machine is broken. And for probably a week or two, that note stayed there and nobody bothered to fix it. They just knew the ice machine was broken. I was in the break room once. He walked in, he saw the note and he said, oh, the ice machine's broken. I didn't know that. He said what he thought was probably in the ice machine, how it probably worked without knowing, disassembled it quickly, uh, found out what was wrong, fixed it, put it back together all in a matter of under five minutes. And that comes from a background of being a copier machine repairman. Incidentally, he's also one of the best programmers I work with. And like me, he spends most of his life, uh, most of his career fixing things that are broken that other people wrote. And so the learning here, the lesson here is that probably one of the best careers you can have before being a software developer is a copy machine repairman. Someone who has the skill to look at something that he or she did not write, uh, make a judgment on it, and then fix it. The debugger is our best friend in that case. The debugger is what we need to help us figure out what's going on, especially in something we didn't write, because we might just be looking at lines of code. If I want to learn something new, the very first thing I do is wire up a debugger to it and, and look at it. So this is kind of a good lesson. I know I promised we'd look at GitHub. This alone is a good lesson. Uh, I'm going to keep this video nice and concise and just explain this lesson. And uh, we'll go ahead and cut the video off now. And in the next video, then I will talk about GitHub. Thank you.